Thank you so much for joining us and watching the service, especially today. You know, just there's something about being in the presence of the Lord. There's such a grace, there's such a presence, there's such an anointing. And even though you're watching from your home or you're watching from maybe a space I shared, I want you to take the next few minutes and just pay attention to God's word. Because God's about to touch in a very significant and powerful way this morning. Or this afternoon, wherever you're watching from. Glory to God. We're going to take some time to pray this morning. I want to ask you, all of you watching from, from home, all of you watching by, you know, television, watching online, I want to stand on your feet. We're going to pray. And this is the first prayer point. This is the first prayer point. This is say with me, say, Heavenly Father. Oh, say, Heavenly Father. Say out loud, say, Heavenly Father. I'm asking the name of Jesus Christ that grant me fresh spiritual encounters. That's the prayer. Grant me fresh spiritual encounters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, grant me fresh spiritual encounters. The Bible says, Blessed are those that hunger and seek for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Let's go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, we're asking, oh God, for today, we're asking for fresh spiritual encounters in the name of Jesus Christ, that you will make the word of God real to our spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. We're asked that continually we will be filled with the Holy Spirit, a fresh and new in the name of Jesus Christ zeke de kondo loro teke shist impatala makoro basanta lego champagne mazis impale mokotonde lekuste paste jeke tenere de bushataya izo prakatande in Jesus name we pray the Bible says this. We're going to also pray. We're going to pray for a change of level. It's this season we are fasting. This season we are praying. Everyone will fast and pray. In case you don't know, we're fasting and praying this season. I want you to personally begin to pray for a change of level. Some people are stuck financially. Some people are stuck in trying to get married. Some marriage are struggling. Some people are struggling with raising their children. Some people finances have just gone the other way. But we believe. The Bible says that the path of the righteous is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter to the perfect day it says from glory to glory in christ jesus i want you to pray at this moment let's go ahead and pray in the name of jesus christ of nazareth we're praying the name of jesus christ it's going to be from glory to glory we're praying for a change of heaven we're praying for a change anywhere you are lift up your hands towards heaven i'm declaring over you this day that there will be a change of level in your marital status. There will be a change of level in your finances. There will be a change of level in your home. There will be a change of level in your marriage. There will be a change of level in your finances. Everyone that has been stagnated, you are moving from minimum to maximum. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying that the miracle of acceleration will happen to you. I'm praying that the favor of God will shoot out in your life. Everything that's held you, every embargo, every embargo on your financial destiny, every embargo on your business, on your career, on your family, on your marriage in the name of jesus christ it's been lifted by the power of god you didn't say that amen very well i say it's been lifted by the power of god i declare concerning the second wave of coronavirus it will not come near you no evil shall come near you no plague shall come near your dwelling place it will not come near you it's not come near your parents it's not come near your children it's not come near your spouse it's not come near your workplace god will preserve and protect you in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen and amen praise the lord Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God. Just a couple of announcements before I step into teaching today. For all of you watching for the first time or participating in this service, this is Harvesters International Christian Center. My name is Bolaji Do. I'm the pastor at Harvesters. And if this is your first time, I want to send us an email or a text message. We would love to extend some materials to you that can help you in your faith. Please remember, our fasting and prayer started last Monday and we're continuing this week. It's really powerful for the testimonies are really 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 amazing that there, there's some very powerful testimonies you know I, I want to really share with you this morning glory to God and maybe it's evening anywhere you are we're going to share some very very powerful testimonies with you it, it's just amazing what the Lord is doing it's just amazing what the Lord is doing hallelujah and you know just amazing what the Lord is doing and um the fasting continues tomorrow. It's from 12 midnight. You can break from 3 if you want to take it down and go further. You are encouraged to do that. And please remember that as we fast and pray, there are physical gatherings. So some of you are watching this from home, but we're gathering physically every single day. We have what we call the next level prayer. The next level prayer, it's even 
you know it's such it's a prayer platform that our church hosts right now i mean last week um they were telling me that um people joining live doing the prayer over fifteen thousand people watching 24 hours after about thirty thousand people just imagine fifteen thousand praying and if you cannot join us live the good thing is that you can join us by watching on youtube on facebook on instagram any of the platform you'll be joining fifteen thousand people that lifting up the name of jesus christ and experiencing the power of the holy ghost and you don't have to be in this country anywhere you are in the world anywhere you have a relative what happens to you in the next level prayer when you hear the testimony when you see the intensity the power of god it's it's nothing you've ever experienced before i want to challenge everyone that not fasted or joined next level prayer tomorrow morning 6 30 a.m join and i was let me tell you you will testify of the grace of the goodness of god in your life in jesus mighty name let me show you some testimony with you from the next level this is very powerful this testimony says the fibroid is gone and this is i remember we have this we get to we get to be you know we get to be submerged in the miraculous that sometimes the normal because i'm normal and the abnormal becomes normal and this lady began to say that i have multiple testimonies but i want to start with the fibroid today i was diagnosed of fibroid in 2015 long and short of the story she she went back and did the test after the word of god went forth and the fibroid had totally disappeared the fibroid had totally disappeared i'm just going to share some some testimonies with you this is another testimony it says pastor Bolaji, i want to be the first to share my good news it has begun i had to break up from a relationship of over three years and it felt i could never recover there's a single girl that's really stuck fine and relationship wise it says i struggle to love again but the lord walked on my heart and i deliberately gave myself to love again i have been committed to the next level prayers and today pastor Balaji, my heart that my heart that struggled two years ago was engaged he says i'm thankful to jesus for home for he's about to start something through to us and this lady was heartbroken and some of you are like that i'm going to tell you something significant is going to happen to you in the name of jesus christ this person said no more lambs no more lambs come and see what the lord has done for me it's it's marvelous in our sight i don't want to i don't i want i didn't even realize i had a testimony till this morning when my when i went to meet my mother and mom says do you realize that my um, and just said mom do you realize my period came and went without any pain not even one pain <laughs> of pain at all no heavy bleeding that was a miracle on the own that was what she remembered that her period came and went without the normal stress there you know what she said even some days i forgot i forgot on my, i was on my period then she went ahead to ask the mom went ahead to ask and say let me see your neck and he said i can't see any lump on your neck again it was there it was there before he said that was when i realized that yesterday during the next level prayer you said there's a lady that has a lump in your breast and uh, you, and it's gone in fact you mentioned the lump was gone twice during the prayer my mom checked each side of my neck and there was no lump the lump is gone see what the lord has done uh, another lady testified she said that she went to see the doctors and she had um she had the blocked fallopian tube and she went back to see the doctors and the doctor said what did you do you know why the fallopian tubes that were blocked have now become potent praise the lord i'm really challenging every one of you every one of you that's watching this this is not by mistake you're watching this i want you to join the next level prayer tomorrow it's going to be life changing i know you're watching my television and it's simple if you can come to the physical center in lake your bagada please come but if you can stay back at home and put on your you know put on your television and let's join 25,000 people pray. If you see 25,000 people getting up to pray at 6.30 a.m. in the morning, that's because God is answering their prayers. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So remember also from the 25th, from, from the 25th, from Upper Sunday, this is apart from this on the next sunday we're going to have a pre-wine press conference and guess what wine press is going to start fully from the for, that was to be the wine press week we have reverend judge coming we have apostle Arome coming we have um reverend Ashley coming you have myself preaching and some other people i want you to join us it's going to be physical centers take time and come and it will be really powerful in jesus mighty name all right let's turn our bibles to first corinthians chapter 15 and today you know we began to share about the, you know we began to share about the last days what god wanted us to do in the last days because when you look at the world today it's amazing because it seems as if there's a huge disruption disruption but the truth is this there is a huge disruption but 
the disruption is coming because we're moving to the end of days. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 12. So, I want to think about what's the next big thing. Of course, as Christians, we know the next big thing on God's calendar is the rapture. And after the rapture, there'll be a great tribulation. And after that, there'll be, you know, there'll be simultaneous event going on in heaven and on earth. But the first thing I want to talk about is that we are in the last days. What are we in the last days? What should we do in the last days? One of the, one of the core beliefs of every Christian is this, that there is life after death. If you're a Christian and you do not believe there's life after death, then you have a big, big trouble. Let's read this together. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 12. Now, if Christ be dead, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how come say some people that there's no resurrection from the dead but if there is no resurrection from the dead then christ is not reason he says and if christ be not reason then is our preaching vain and your faith your faith is also vain let's jump quickly to verse 16 if the dead rise not then is not christ raised and if christ be not raised your faith is vain you are you are yet in your sins you are yet in your sins then they also that sleep in christ in christ are perished it's amazing but see what it says if in this life this verse 19 what i'm going to it says if in this life we have hope in christ if in this life only we have hope in christ we are of all men what the most miserable what is Paul saying here? Paul says that if everything about human existence ends here, it says we're stupid. So, one of the core beliefs of our Christian life is this, that there is a life after this place. There is a heaven to gain. There is a hell to lose. How do I know that? When you read through the Bible, the Bible is full of stories. Let me show you something. Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. The Bible says, As at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, and shall stand up for the children of the people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never seen before. This was referring to the great tribulation as a nation. To the same time, and about that time shall the people be delivered. And everyone that shall be found written in the book. Look at verse 2. This, this is very powerful. Because some people don't really say that, you know what, when we come on earth, we just sleep and die. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches clearly that after death, there is life. The Bible teaches clearly that there's life after death. And the reason I'm saying this to you is this. If you know there is life after death, the question I want to ask you is this. How are you living today in preparation for tomorrow? Because some people just live for today. And if you know there's life after death, you want to ask yourself, all the things I'm using my life for today, will they really be worth it in tomorrow? Because when you get to eternity, some things will not matter again. It's no matter how many followers you have on social media. It's no matter how rich you were. It's no matter if you were poor or rich. It's no matter if you were big or small. All those things will not matter again. What will matter is what you did on earth for eternity. Look at Daniel chapter, chapter 12. The Bible says, And many of them that sleep in the dust, many, many that died, shall what? Shall, that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. It says, Many that are dead shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to everlasting shame and everlasting contempt. The Bible says a time is going to come where people that sleep in the grave are going to get up. Paul says the same thing in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. He says, at the trump of the Lord, the dead in Christ shall rise up. He says, we that are alive and remain in the faith shall be cut up in the air forever. This is so powerful. It's so nice to know that this world is not our home. It's so nice to know that with all the denials we have, there is a heaven to gain. It's so nice to know that one day, very soon, the trumpet will sound. The Bible calls it the last trump of the Lord. And the dead in Christ will all of a sudden leave and they will go away. The other day I was sharing and I said, it's so amazing. You know what's amazing? Because Matthew says it this way. He said, two shall be together. One shall be taken. The other left. 
You know what I mean? You'll go to a shop right store, you'll go to some store, you're trying to buy something, and you pull out your credit card to pay or your debit card to pay, and the lady behind the counter pulls out the POS to pay, and before you know it, bam, the card drops, the customer is gone. One is taken, the other is left. Because many people never think about that. Do you know, does it does even occur to you that this message could be the last message you will ever hear? And before today is concluded, there can be a sound of the trumpet. And before you know it, people will go to the rapture. What will it be? The Bible says some will wake up to everlasting life. The Bible says others wake up to everlasting shame. Because we are right now in the last hour of the last days. All the signs the apostles and the prophets spoke about are coming to pass. So some people are asking, you know, when you die, are you sure you're not going to sleep forever? The Bible doesn't say so. The Bible says that many of them that sleep shall awake and some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting content. What does the Bible say in the book of Matthew chapter 25? What, what does it? This is the word of Jesus. Now, this is not just a prophet saying something. This is the word of Jesus. Matthew chapter 5, 25, verse 45. What does it say? This is what it says. It says, And then he shall answer them, saying, Very, very nice say unto you, as inasmuch as ye did this to one of the least of the others, you did it inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of the others, you did not do it to me. And this you go into everlasting punishment, and the righteous shall go into life eternal. What was just Christ talking about? He was just giving an example that when we get to the other life, because this is what life is. At one side of life, there's lifetime as we know it. At another side of life, there is eternity that has no end. And Jesus Christ says, what you become in eternity is dependent on what, what you do where? in this life what you become in eternity is dependent on what you do in this life you know people are going to get to heaven and they'll be so successful and huge on earth but when they get to heaven god is going to ask them simple question like what did you do for me and they will have nothing to say they will say things like you know i had a great career i raised great kids and god will say all that you did for yourself the reason why is that in eternity the only the things that are done for christ will last and are rewarded and the things that are done for Christ is not what is enticing, it's not what is celebrated, it's not what people do today. Only the things that are done for Christ will last and it's celebrated. And this morning, that's what we're calling. Someone says, why are we teaching this message? The reason why we're teaching the message is this. Because as we come to the end of days, people begin to lose focus. People begin to forget that Maranatha, Maranatha means Jesus is coming soon. And we must remind ourselves that child of God, this world is not your home. You are in a transition. As you make plans for 2021, you, will not even, you may not even be here to see the end of it because the rapture has happened. The question is this, how are you prepared for the rapture? You're home, sitting down on the couch and just lying down there. How is your relationship with Jesus? Are, are you making conscious effort today because of the eternity? This is today. Are you making conscious effort today because of the eternity in tomorrow? Are you doing something today about your tomorrow? Little story in Matthew 25. They say, the people that didn't do anything says, Lord, when didn't we do something? He said, all the time you were on earth and you had the opportunity to do something in my name and you never did it. That was your opportunity. Because you were born for a purpose. You were made for a purpose. You were created for a purpose. One day, Jesus will come. And the Bible says, soon and very soon. I don't know if you know the song that says, soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, we are going to see the king. And when you go to see the king, all you did as a banker, all you did as a father, all you did as a mother, all you did as a janitor, all you did in all the pageantry, all those, all those things don't matter. What will matter is what is done for Christ. Will you be like the person that has one talent and never did something for Christ with it? Well, you hear this kind of message. What should it do to you? First John 
first john chapter 3 verse 2 and 3 the bible says everyone that has this hope the hope of an eternal future he says everyone that had this hope allows the hope to purify him he says when you think of the future that hope of heaven that hope of a crown that hope of a heavenly abode that hope of you know of a stay in heaven that hope purifies you the reason why most people are struggling with their christian life is this they've forgotten that there's a heaven they're going to and this is to remind you we are in the last days the end is closed the rapture can happen in the moment from now and when it happens what will it be a christian life i don't know some people right now sunday is a chilling day very chilling day we just chill on sundays in the last days let's see what happens in the last days. so i've said to you that the bible clearly teaches there's life after the death revelation chapter 15 says uh, chapter 20 says it says the dead gave up the dead in it the sea gave up the dead in it we've seen that life after the death secondly we've seen that life after the death and what will become in that life is based on what we're doing in this current life and life after death is going to be in everlasting bliss or in everlasting condemnation what are the signs of the last days let's look at second timothy chapter 3 signs of the last days he's coming back again my lord is coming back again he went away and promised he's coming back again you know the song yeah second theme of the three verse one what does it say it says know this also so with all the things you know it says know this also what you know that in the last days perilous times the word perilous times means difficult times will come when you see the covid pandemic when you see the recession that is global when you see the chaos going on in the u.s when you see all the things happening on social media why should you be surprised jesus already told us it's in the last days difficult times will come so when you see the difficulty of these days it's a clear reminder to you that when the last days so the first sign of the last days is this it will become more difficult globally it's more, more difficult economically marriage is it's more difficult to stay married the second thing it says is this it says why because men shall become lovers of themselves it says in the last days people will begin to worship a new idol you know what the name of the idol is me no wonder we have a generation that's called a selfie generation you know what people don't worship idols in the shrine again they worship themselves they worship what they want they worship how they feel they worship their perspective they worship their values they worship themselves you will hear people say that you know i'm a christian but I don't accept that you know people worship what they want you see people they I, I i worship god the way i want you don't worship god the way you want you worship god the way he wants you to worship him you don't pray the way you want you pray the way he wants you to pray it's not about you you people like see you can create yourself you were made for a purpose he says but in the last days what you're going to see is this people are going to live lives that are very self-centered and very self-absorbed people will forget that there's a divine destiny there's a divine purpose people are going to forget that people are going to forget there's a divine destiny a divine purpose it's heartbreaking some people all the concern is about the career some people all the concerns about making money some for all the concerns about academics and education and marriage and all those things are important but those things should not be driving your life some people the biggest decision the biggest decision are based on what they can eat what they can drink on food on job on career your biggest decision should be based on what christ wants you to do glory to god that's a good that's a good time to say amen so the Bible says in the last days, number one, perilous times shall come. He said the second thing, men will become lovers of themselves. You know some people, you just sit at home on a Sunday morning and they could just walk to church. And I understand some people like, have the skill of the virus. But a lot of people like, know, when there was a riot in Lagos, Nigeria, they stepped out and went to the riots. But they could step out and go to church. Lovers of themselves. Are you a lover of yourself? Do you place yourself above the things of God? When they said next level prayer, now we step to fast. Do you place that above the things of God? 
and, and it's important because you need to ask yourself because God gave you time, God gave you energy, God gave you resources. The one that gave you all those things, one day is going to account for it. Will you tell him all the things you gave me, I spent on myself. All the time you gave me, I spent on myself. All the energy you gave me, I spent on myself. All the gifts you gave me, I spent on myself. All the money you gave me, I spent on myself. Oh, will you be able to say, I was able to actually do all. I was actually able to bless all the people. I was able to advance the kingdom with what you gave me. One day soon, Jesus will come. One day soon, the trumpet will sound. The Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise up. Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. We're going to read from verse 1. The Bible says in verse 1, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holds the seven stars, and all this are metaphoric. You know, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people study the book of Revelation hoping to find the Antichrist. The book of Revelation is not about the Antichrist. As a matter of fact, the title of the book is this, The Book of the Revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Satan is so ins insignificant for God to dedicate a book to talk about him. And, and you need to get into the Bible because sometimes people read the book of um, Revelation and they get confused. And the reason why that some things are just metaphorical, when the Bible says he that holds the seven stars in his hand, in chapter 1, he's told us what the seven stars are. So the seven stars are metaphors. For example, you may not believe, you may not know this, but the Bible says this. People say the mark of the Antichrist is 666. There's nothing like that in the Bible. The mark of the Antichrist is not 666. The Bible says the number of the mark is the number of man. Except for the mark. I really believe that if there's going to be a physical mark, it's going to be like a code. And that's why you can see across developed countries, people are beginning to bank with their faces. People are banking with their right hand, just like, you know, just like the Lord said it will happen. So let's read. A feature of the one verse one. It says, We'll walk in the midst of the candlesticks. What did they say? Verse two. This is very powerful. Listen, Jesus is speaking to the church in Ephesus. He says, Hey, I know thy works. Question. Can God say that about you? I know you're sitting at me watching this in the kitchen, driving in the car, sitting on the couch. Can Jesus look at you and say, I know your work? Do you have any work at all? Then it goes forth and says, not just your work, I know your labor. Labor means this is intense. He says, and your patience. Are you patient? Something that's not happened as a miracle, and you say all sorts, it's in your patience. See what it says. And how that cannot best those that are evil, and has tried them which says they are apostles, and are not, but has found them guilty. Sorry, I found them liars and has born and has had patience for my name's sake and has labored it says i love what jesus christ takes note of did you notice what he didn't take note of he didn't say i know you're married he didn't say i know you have a child he didn't say i know you have an expensive house he didn't say all of those things the simple thing he said was this he says i know your work what work what labor the work and labor that will matter in eternity is the work and labor for christ stop living today as if there's no tomorrow stop thinking and living today as if it all ends here you must remember there is a tomorrow the Bible speaks of a rich man. The rich man was, a, was in the Wu and Wu. He was in the fourth list of the riches. But when he got to heaven, the rich man was a nobody. Don't be a somebody on earth and a nobody in heaven. What did they say? It says, thou hast labored and not fainted. There are many people that have served Jesus. Served as an usher. Served as a leader. As a greeter. As a pastor. And they've served for three, four months. And now they're tired. They're tired because of people. They're tired because of circumstances. They say, I I'm tired. I, I can't do this again. And Jesus Christ said, I know your work. Listen to me. You think the church is the one that is rewarding you? Jesus said, I'm paying attention to every single thing you're doing. Hallelujah. You know why that is important to me? Because one day, hallelujah, when he sees us, he's going to say thank you. And sometimes we forget that. 
He says, I know your labor and your patience and how you're not giving up. There were many opportunities to give up your faith. There were many opportunities to give up what to believe in Jesus. He says, but I see that you don't give up. My brother, don't give up your prayer life. Maybe we have to wake up every 6 a.m. to pray. Don't give that up. Maybe you have to serve in a unit, host a cell. Don't give that up. Listen to me. In this world, it gets tiring. I understand that. We're all humans. We get tired. But remember your focus. Remember that one day he's coming. I want to find me serving. I want to find him living for him. Then he said this. He says, nevertheless, I have somewhat against you. Oh my God. When all those things that he was commending them for, he has something against them. He said, yes. What is this? It is because thou hast left a first love. That touched me in a deep way. Meaning that what? Remember, those who were laboring and working. They were laboring and working and their heart was no longer perfect. That hurts. That hurts. And God says, you don't understand. It's not just what you do. It's not that you pray. It's not that you fight. It's not that you fast. I'm concerned with your heart. And, and I'm saying it today because a lot of people have forgotten why they do what they do. He says, you've forgotten. You still have the actions. You still have to get up and pray. But the real passion and love is disappeared. He says, you've forgotten the first love. Someone said, what's first love? First love is that relationship that is. Do you know what it means when you had your first boyfriend? Do you know what it means when you had your first car? How you would scratch the tires and clean it out? Do you have your first phone? You almost kiss the phone up and about. It's the first experience. The, the first love talks about, talks about the trust, the authenticity, the passion. Do you know what it means when you first got born again? You were so into it. You were so passionate. You were so looking for it. it says, eventually, all those things begin to fall away. And God says, give me back your first love. And you know why this is important? This is the message of Jesus Christ to the church in Ephesus. And Ephesus is a type of the church in the last days. In the last days today, we have people that come to church. People that talk in church, people that serve in church, people that pastor. But their first love is gone. They're drained. They're exhausted. They've lost the real motivation for why they're Christians. And God is saying, don't be like that right now. I don't know where your first love is. Was there, was there a time in your life you were more in love with God than you are right now? Don't let it be like that. Is there a time you were more given to prayer than you are right now? Don't let it be like that. He says, remember your first love. He said, remember your first love. Why? In the last days, you are going to find a lot of professional Christians. What's professional Christian? They don't do it because they want to do it from the heart. They do it because they have to do it. It's a lot of religion that you see. The prayer is not something they're passionate about. Because when you have first love, there's passion, there's interest, there's realness, there's authenticity. There's, there's something that's so real, so genuine. That's a deep, genuine relationship that you have. But when it's professional, you just want to do enough to go. I've seen people that say, I don't want to do too much. So they say, fight. They say, once I give 10%, it's fine. I'm not saying your tithe is not 10%, but the Christian doesn't even talk about the tithe. It's the fact that God owns everything. When they say fast, you want to say, how far? It's amazing because Christians are wondering, how can I cut down on commitment? they're wondering how can i do less if you have your first love you'll be saying how can i do more because when you have the first love you just want to give you just want to pray you don't want to give you don't want to pray and just give the whole of yourself to him one last let me ask you a question when last did you have a genuine time of prayer and you know this was a god moment and had a personal encounter with god let me ask you that question when you miss prayer do you feel bad you've missed a religious obligation or do you miss Jesus? You should miss Jesus. I'm mean, like, having so far, I feel so dry. That's what the first love is. 
The, when you read the Bible, does the word of God elevate you? Does it stir you up? Or when you read the Bible, you like you're home right now, you just sit on the couch. You don't even have a note, you don't even have a Bible. It's just watching as you're cooking. That's not how you take God's word. David said, Ah, he said, he said, I rejoice over your word. Like he that stumbled, he that, he that had the grace fall. He says, I allow the word of God to chew me. I allow the word of God to stir me up. I allow the word of God to motivate me. I allow the word of God to change me. That's what should happen. He should allow the word of God to do something to you. My God. Remember your first love. And Jesus Christ began to speak to them. And imagine Jesus saying this. So this is my last, this is my last point. In this last days, people will become, people will backslide. Second Timothy says, there will be more lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. People will be willing to go more to an island beach on a Sunday morning than to go to church. People are willing to stay at home and turn on television than to go to church. People are willing to take their giving, their titan, and use to buy shoes and buy pay other things than give to God. People are willing to spend more time on, the, on Facebook and social media than pray. People are willing to read love stories than read the Bible. People are willing to buy all manner of, Christ, of materials than buy Christian materials. Because in the last days, people are going to become lovers of themselves. Lovers of themselves, they're going to care about the opinion of other people. Listen to me. The most important opinion to care about is the opinion of God about your life. And I'm saying so because many people have gotten distracted and you're living the wrong way. And listen to me. If this message is touching you, you call your friend, you call your neighbor and say, tune in right now and watch. And if you missed it, you go to the YouTube page and watch it again. Watch it again and again until you get to the place where you come back to your first love. Because it's a new year. God is calling you back to your first love. You have financial goals. You have career goals. You have health goals. Do you have spiritual goals? When last did you win someone for Jesus? When last did you join someone to Christ? When last did you defend the cause of the gospel? When last did you even give a seat to the Lord in terms of thanks, even a tithe and an offering? It's in the last days. Men shall become lovers of themselves. Me, 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 me. Give me me. The only prayer they want is, Lord, bless me. One last day pray for missionaries in, in Afghanistan. One last day pray for northern Nigeria and the countries where there's huge persecution against the church. One last. It says this. In verse 25. So, verse, two, verse, not verse 25, chapter 2, Revelation chapter 4. It said, Nevertheless, I have something against you because you have left your first love. So, the first thing I want to ask you is this How do you become consistent? Number one, what have you left? What habits have you left? Because that's how people backslide, they leave something. What value have you left? What relationship have you left? What serving opportunity have you left? The second thing is this. It says, remember your first love. Can you remember how you were at that time? When you come to church, when you hear the songs, before one or two songs, all your faces are soaked, your cosmetic is fading off, and you don't care. Before you know you sit on the floor, you don't care. It says, remember your first love. Do you know when you were so passionate about giving to the gospel? You gave like crazy. All your friends thought you were crazy. You know, you're so passionate about getting that people to know Jesus and you'll share the gospel. Do you know why you're so passionate about church? You will come for one service, attend the other service. You know, you're so passionate about just loving Jesus. You couldn't just imagine how people were passive. It says, number one, what have you left? It says, remember your first love. Will you check your first love? Number three, remember your first love. Remember who you were. All the other people wanted to be like you because we admired your prayer life. We admire your passion for Jesus. But now you have so much money, but there's no passion for Jesus again. Then the next thing is this. What did he say? It says, remember what I have fallen. Remember when you fell. Because there's always a point where you begin to lose traction. Remember that point. Remember what cost it and begin to fix it from there. And what did they say? It says, when, remember our falling and repent. Repent is not just cry, it says, have a change of mind. 
have a change of thinking. And what did they say? He said, go back and do the first works. He says, what you were doing before that you left. He said, don't go back and do works. He said, go back and do what? The first works. That was the way you were before. There was a passion you carried it out. Hey, you know, you're doing something right now. You're doing works. But it says, your works are good. But go back to your first love. There was an energy you had. There was a passion you had. There was a willingness you had. There was an hunger you had. He said, go back to your first love. My God, those days when you prayed, the whole place will quiver, the whole place will shake because there was an intensity in your prayer. But now you don't have that again. Go back to your first love. That was the place you will share. You will share the next level flyers and share the posters all over social media and do videos. But right now you don't care again. He said, go back to your first love. That was the way you were passionate about talking to people about Jesus and inviting them to join either the online or the offline service. He said, go back to your first love. That's how you were about serving. You were so energetic about leading, about serving. He said, go back to your first love. And he says this. This is, this is, this is very touching. It says, repent and do your first works or else I will come unto you quickly and I will remove your candlestick. Hey, may God not remove your candlestick. Ah! He says, I would, if you don't repent, he says, I will remove your candlestick. What is making you shine? Out of his place, except thou repent. He said, But these thou also, thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. There verse, there, verse 7. He says, He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. And to him that overcometh. So, just very strong instruction in verse 7. It says, he that had an ear. You know what I'm saying so? Many Christians don't know how to embrace correction. Now you've heard this message. Do you have an ear? God is telling to be conscious of the rapture. Have you, what's going to change today? Is anything going to change? It says, he that had an ear, let him hear. There are Christians that have ears, but don't hear. You correct them, they're offended. You challenge them, they refuse to be challenged. He said, he that had it here, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Unto the churches. Question, what's the Spirit saying to you today? Prepare for the rapture. Leave for tomorrow. So I say, how do I leave for tomorrow? The only thing that will be rewarded on the other side is what's done for Christ. When last did you win a soul for Christ? When last did you pray for missionaries? When last to help the poor? What last did you give your substance and give your tithe and offering? What last did you say, this is the gift that God has given me. I want to serve people with my gifts. Because only what's done for Christ will last. He that had an ear, let him hear. The next last thing is this. The last thing is this. And to him that overcometh, I will give to him to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the garden, the paradise of God. Overcome what? Overcome the distractions. And that's what you make up your mind to do. The Christian life, see, the Christian race is this way. As you're going, there's distraction on the right. That's what your friends want. That's what things, are, things have happened. And you yourself, you're pulling like this. You're pulling like this. You're pulling like this. And someone wants to take your commitment. Someone wants to upset you. Someone wants to get you out of the church. He said, he that overcome it. If there's nothing to overcome, there'll be no reason to overcome. He says, what do you overcome? You overcome the distractions of the flesh. You overcome the destruction of this world. Is it to him that overcome it? Why did he tell you to overcome? Because he know, you know you can overcome it. Look at now. Now we're fasting and praying. And someone says, it's time for food. Okay, what do you say? Put, that, put away the food. Why? Esau sold his bet right for a meal. It became one of the most two people in the Bible. Jacob sold a meal for a bet right. Focus. What are you going to overcome? Listen to me. There are things that held you down spiritually. It's time to get up today and overcome them. This is what I will say to you. First question I ask you, what have you left? What have you left? What have you forgotten? Where did you fall from? I want to make decisions today. Decisions today and say, I've left that. Maybe it's a relationship that used to guide you. Maybe it's a soul you've left. Maybe it's service you've left. Maybe it's giving. Maybe it's prayer you've left. I've left that. Well, tomorrow now we're gathering to pray. I want to challenge you to join us to pray. 6 30 a.m. Get all your friends to join us. Have you left prayer also? So I said, well, you know, I, I lost it my own prayer. Have you left prayer also? I, I said, I just go to church my own time. You just go to church on your own time? What is wrong with you? You were never like this kind of person. What have you left? 
What are the other things that have crept into your heart? So much of television now, no time for prayer again. It's time to pray. And this time around, anywhere you are, stand on your feet. And if you want to fall on your knees, you can go ahead and fall on your knees. Lift up your hands towards heaven. And say, Lord, have mercy upon my soul. I have been so distracted. I have lost so much focus. I have forgotten the reality that heaven is near and the rapture is soon. But thank you for reminding me today. Let me read the scripture to you. First John chapter 3, verse 3, I believe. It says, everyone that has this hope in him purifies himself as he is pure. The hope of the future should purify you. Let's pray together. 